Hi friends, welcome back. Today I'm gonna to be telling you everything that you need to know about leasing a horse. Let me tell you what we're gonna be talking about in today's video. We're gonna be talking about my history with riding horses and why I decided that I wanted to lease. We're gonna be talking about the pros and cons of leasing. We're also gonna be covering the cost of leasing a horse. I have real prices, real numbers from two different barns that I've been going to. And then to conclude the video, we're gonna be talking about whether or not I would recommend leasing a horse. Okay, before we really get into it, I have two really quick things that I wanna mention. The first is that all of the prices that I'm gonna be mentioning in today's video are in Canadian dollars, so that's something to keep in mind. The second thing is that I live in Calgary, Alberta. Obviously, the cost of things kind of fluctuates depending on where you live, but the prices that I'm providing in today's video reflect my area. I hope that that makes sense. So I started riding horses when I was a kid. Um, it was very casual. It was just like on a family, friends, acreage. They had a few horses that they would let me ride when my dad was there working. I never did any competitions or like took it too seriously. It was really more just like a fun thing for me to do. And then I took a very long hiatus. I'm 25 now, so it was about 15 years that I didn't ride horses at all. And then I decided that I wanted to get back into it kind of over the summer. And that's where my journey to finding a good barn um, and leasing a horse started. So the reason why I started getting serious about leasing a horse was because I was doing lessons about once a week, but I kind of found that, you know, like you're learning new skills in lessons, but then I don't have a horse at home for me to practice on. And I really wanted that extra practice time. Again, even now I'm not serious about doing, you know, shows or competitions, anything like that. Um, for me, I was doing Western Pleasure and I really just wanted to get really good at the basics, walk, trot, canter, the transitions between, that kind of thing. So now that I've actually, you know, leased a horse, I want to share with you the positives and negatives that I have found from the experience. So let's start with the positives. The first, obviously, leasing is a lot cheaper than owning your own horse for many reasons. Like I said, we're going to be going over the real numbers from two different barns that I've been going to, but I mean, it's no secret that obviously leasing is a lot less expensive than owning your own horse. With that said though, leasing kind of feels a little bit like you're owning your own horse. I mean, depending on your contract, you can pretty much ride like whenever, wherever, it's a really great option. In my case, at both barns, I was riding really well-trained, confidence-boosting school horses. So overall, I feel like I learned a lot and I got a lot better than I ever was, you know, when I was riding consistently as a kid. And then of course, leasing is a great way to test whether or not you could really see yourself owning a horse in the future. Now onto the negatives, obviously with leasing, even though it feels like you may own the horse, you don't actually, and so you obviously have to respect the owner's wishes. So I'm gonna give you an example of why this was a negative for me. We had been practicing cantering for a few lessons and that was what I wanted to get better at during my hack rides, and then the owner said that she wanted cantering to only take place during the lessons. And it kind of rubbed me the wrong way because to me, the whole purpose of leasing the horse was to be able to practice the skills that I was learning in the lessons, if that makes sense. So I guess, yeah, it just kind of put me off that um, I wasn't able to practice those skills when that was the whole point of me signing the lease. That's probably the biggest one. But the second thing I came up with is like, depending on if you're doing a full, a half or a quarter lease, depends on your contract, but you're sharing the horse with up to three other people. For me personally, I was doing a quarter lease, so I had to coordinate around three other people's schedules when I was gonna come in and do my hack rides. Okay, let's talk about the real price, the real cost of leasing a horse. Let's talk about barn number one. So at barn number one, I was riding a 14 year old Arabian gelding. He could go both English or Western. Personally, I only did Western and included in my lease was all of the tack that he needed, the grooming, the brushes, the blankets, everything like that. If you see me looking down at my phone, it's just because all of my notes are there, but I did a quarter lease and it was $596 a month. So included in that price was one lesson a week and one hack ride a week. I did have the option of doing a half lease and that was $1,017 a month. So quite a big increase, but that one included one lesson and two hack rides. I should also mention that at this barn, the lessons were group lessons and not private lessons. So if that's something that is important to you, 
it's definitely something to keep in mind. So there were group lessons and they were 60 minutes long and that included the tacking, untacking, um, warm up and cool down periods. So really it was about like 30 to 40 minutes of actual riding time during the lessons. And then the hack rides, you pretty much had the freedom to do whatever you want, obviously within reason. You don't wanna overwork the horse, but typically I would go for about like 40 minutes to an hour. And the 40 minutes to an hour was of like actual riding time during my hack rides. And then I would do like the tacking and untacking, all that stuff outside of that 30 to 40 minute window. Another thing to consider is that at this specific barn, they required a three month lease commitment. My contract said that I was able to show or compete with the horse for no extra cost obviously outside of like you know the travel expenses and stuff but they weren't going to charge me extra money to use the school horse in competitions overall it was a really nice clean like well-kept facility um, but it was about a 50 minute drive like five zero away from my house and then 50 minutes back so obviously when you're looking into barns, that's another thing you really need to consider, all the money you're gonna be spending on gas to travel back and forth. The instructor at this place was decent. I wouldn't say she was amazing. I've definitely learned more from other instructors I've had, but overall, I mean, the whole experience was okay. One additional thing that I wanna mention is even though the lease cost was $596, um, I did get charged for Another expense, this one was the teeth floating procedure. So because I was doing a quarter lease, I paid for a quarter of the procedure and it was about $68 Canadian. I do still have a copy of this lease. So I'm gonna find a way to scan it and put it up on the screen. But if you're thinking about signing a lease, make sure you look for parts in the contract that say stuff like, you know, fees include, but are not limited to X, Y, Z, because that's how they get you and, you know, can charge you more than, I guess, you think you're gonna be paying. Okay, let's move on to barn number two. So at this barn, I was riding a four-year-old quarter horse mare. She could go both English and Western as well. And obviously I rode Western. Same thing came with the tack, blankets, grooming supplies, everything that I needed. At this barn, my quarter lease was $560 and it was the same thing. It included one lesson and one hack ride, but the lesson at this place included in this cost was a private lesson. Now this is where it gets significantly cheaper. At this place, for a quarter lease, it was $613 a month and included the private lesson and the two hack rides. If you remember at the last place, it was over a thousand for a half lease. So obviously quite a bit cheaper. I should mention at this place, the lessons were private and they were around 40 minutes. Um, but that was not including the tacking, untacking, warm up, cool down periods. So really it ended up being around the same length of time. But obviously, like I said, this place, the lessons were private. At this place, the leases were on a month to month basis. So to cancel, you only had to give a 30 day written notice, which is really nice. This barn also had a $50 fee if you wanted to use the horse in any sort of show or competition. This barn was actually only 30 minutes away from my house instead of 50. And it was really close to where my parents live. So I was able to kind of like make a full day out of it. You know, like I could go in for my lesson, see my parents, kill two birds with one stone. So this location was personally better for me than the other place. This barn also, um, it was a really nice, clean, well-kept facility. And I would say that I really preferred this instructor and found her a lot more knowledgeable compared to my instructor at the last place. A few quick notes that I just want to mention. The first is that some barns have the option for you to work off the cost or at least part of the cost of the lease. For me, the first barn that I mentioned, um, they had the option to come in at about six no it was 7 a.m um and work for a few hours on saturday mornings and that would work off part of the board fee of the lease second thing to consider like i said um both school horses that i rode included tack but the tack can change at the first barn um they changed the saddle that the horse was using without telling me so i showed up for my hack ride alone um, and i didn't really know how to put the saddle on properly. I definitely wanted someone to look over it. So that's something to consider too, that even though you don't have to buy your own tack to lease necessarily, the tack can change. For me, it was kind of more of like a safety concern. I obviously didn't want to get hurt. I didn't want the horse to get hurt. So anyways, yeah, just something to keep in mind. The last thing that I want to mention is that Horses can get injured and that affected my riding schedule. So at the first barn, the horse that I was riding, he was outside with the other horses and he got bit really badly and he couldn't 
have the saddle on because it was rubbing over where the bite was and it was really uncomfortable for him so I had to change my riding schedule that week and then there was another week that he had a swollen leg they weren't sure why but that also affected the riding schedule so just stuff like that to keep in mind. Okay, now let's talk about overall if I would recommend leasing a horse. I would say the short answer is yes, but with a few conditions. The first being, obviously you need to have the financial means. It's a very expensive thing to do, so definitely make sure you have the disposable income um, and you're really able to afford it because like I mentioned, like unexpected cost can come up and it's already expensive but it can be even more expensive than you anticipate i would also say that leasing is a great option if you're genuinely passionate about learning about horses not necessarily just learning how to ride if you want to just learn how to ride a horse you can take lessons but you know leasing is a great option because you have to learn how to genuinely like take care of the horse how to go catch the horse tack it all of that kind of stuff another thing i think i really underestimated the importance of is really making sure you like the facility, the owner of the horse, and the instructor. Like I've said many times now, it's a very expensive thing to do and you wanna make sure you know that you're around people that you like and that are supportive, I guess, like of your journey learning how to ride and to take care of a horse. Overall, I'm glad I did try leasing a horse. You know, I'm thankful for the experience, but I'm also a little bit relieved that I'm not gonna be doing it for the next little while mostly because it's very expensive, but also I kind of want to get a little bit more um, confident, I guess, in my skills and, you know, just learn more taking lessons once a week throughout the winter. But I am thinking probably in the summer, I'll look into signing another contract, probably at barn number two, um, if everything, you know, goes well over the winter. That's all the info I have for you today. I hope you found it a little bit helpful. If you have leased a horse in the past and you have some tips you want to share, please leave a comment or maybe if you're thinking about leasing a horse and you have questions, definitely let me know. I'd love to talk about it. But anyways, yeah, that's all I have for you. So I will talk to you next week.